the eighth day. Today Jesus asks us to bring to him all the souls who are detained in purgatory and to immerse them in the abyss of his mercy. All these souls are greatly loved by Christ. They are just making retribution to his justice. And it is in our power, by our prayers, to bring them relief. And so we're asked to draw upon all the indulgences from the treasury of our church and to offer them on their behalf. Purgatory is perhaps one of those things that's, uh, well, maybe most misunderstood. Uh, usually when we think of purgatory, I guess a lot of people think of some place that's kind of bad. And for good reason. I mean, we hear words like, well, souls being detained in purgatory and being detained is bad. We hear of suffering, the suffering of those in purgatory and, well, suffering is bad. And yet we have to realize that when we speak of purgatory, we always speak of it in relationship to what comes next. We speak of it in relation to heaven. And I tell you what, everything is going to look less than. Everything is going to be, well, in com by comparison, regarded as bad when you compare it to the greatest of all goods. But... The, the thing about purgatory is it's not bad or less than in the same way that, well, hell is. Because hell really isn't and can't be compared to heaven. It's like completely the opposite. There's not this, um, this analogous understanding of things getting better and better and better, or if you're moving the other direction, things getting worse and worse and worse. Hell is like way over there. And he heaven and purgatory are over here. And purgatory is related to heaven because it leads to heaven. You know, hell is a place where well, people go by virtue of their choice to reject God. To have nothing to do with his life. To have nothing to do with love. To have nothing to do with mercy. To have, well, nothing to do with all that is good and true and beautiful. And even though that, that decision doesn't make sense. Uh, not to us, not to anyone, because it's, well, the opposite of sense. It's the opposite of reason to reject the good. But that's over there. That's hell. When it comes to purgatory, purgatory is the place that we go to, well, pay our debt, so to speak, due to sin. And that's something that we shouldn't fear, but actually look forward to. Because it's something that we do in the grace of Christ. You know, I've often thought purgatory is in a place that is worse than where we're at. Sometimes we fear purgatory because we think it's going to be worse than where we're at. It's actually better than where we're at. Because yes, you still have suffering. Yes, you still are, well, apart from what you truly want, what you truly desire to attain, which is heaven. But you're fully given the grace of Christ that you need. You're fully given the life of God. Little by little, at a greater magnitude, at a greater ability to participate. It's a place for us to kind of strengthen our soul. To be able to actually, well, live that heavenly life. You know, sins and the punishment due to sin is really just the weakness that sin causes in us. You know, if you don't work out, you're not going to be able to get up and just run a mile. You might have to work up to it. And that's kind of what purgatory is in relationship to heaven. Because of our sins or because of our attachment to the world, we might not be well capable of fully experiencing heaven just like that. We might actually need, well, some time, a process, to slowly, well, get stronger and more able and capable to actually live the life that God has for us, that he desires for us. That's what purgatory is all about. It's a, it's a wonderful place. It's a, very much a, a graced place. But when you compare it to heaven, it doesn't look, well, like much of anything. Because anything compared to heaven is going to look quite, well, lame. 
And so it's incumbent upon us to, well, pray for those in purgatory and to ask the Lord to continue to, well, make those people strong, make those souls able to be admitted into heaven. And that's something that we can truly do by our prayers. When we unite our sufferings to their sufferings and their sufferings to the sufferings of Christ, we open ourselves up to that grace that we need to be strengthened for the life of heaven. And so let us do just that. Let us pray for them. Let us ask them for, for their prayers. And so united by that desire to live in grace, we might all at last attain that perfection of God's eternal banquet feast, heaven above. Let us pray. Most merciful Jesus, you yourself have said that you desire mercy. So I bring into the abode of your most compassionate heart the souls in purgatory, souls who are very dear to you, and yet who have to make retribution to your justice. May the streams of blood and water which gush forth from your heart put out the flames of purgatory, that there too the power of your mercy may be celebrated by all. Eternal Father, Turn your merciful gaze upon the souls suffering in purgatory who are enfolded in the most compassionate heart of Jesus. And I beg you, by the sorrowful passion of Jesus your Son, and by all the bitterness with which his most sacred soul was flooded, manifest your mercy to the souls who are under your just scrutiny. Look upon them in no other way but through the wounds of Christ, your dearly beloved Son. For we firmly believe that there is no limit to your goodness, to your compassion. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.